Well, good morning, girls. Good morning, Aunt Lydia. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most intense moments on The Handmaid's Tale. Run. For this list, we're looking at the most nerve-wracking and agonizing scenes from the first four seasons of this dystopian drama series. A spoiler alert is now in effect, just in case you're not fully caught up yet. Which of these moments had you rethinking your decision to watch the show? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Fred Waterford Gets Arrested one of the most divisive points of The Handmaid's Tale comes in the season two finale, when June hands baby Nicole over to Emily and stays behind in Gilead. Tell her I love her. June! No! June! June! While this ensures a better future for Nicole, it initiates a chain of events that results in a disastrous one for Fred Waterford. After a series of pleas and negotiations for Nicole's return, Fred and Serena meet with Mark Tuello, the U.S. official who'd earlier approached Serena in Canada. I have a safe place we can talk up ahead. Follow me. Desperation easily clouds their judgment, as Tuello deceives them into following him across the border into Canada. Once there, he reads a laundry list of the commander's war crimes and places him under arrest to the absolute satisfaction of everyone watching. The charges identify the use of your authority and access to the apparatus of the state. Number nine, The Handmaid's Close Call. You are told the will of God and you say, I know better. Although The Handmaid's Tale is an adaptation of the Margaret Atwood novel, the series exhausts the book's narrative by the end of the first season. For its follow-up, the show's writers take things into their own hands and drive us down a path of total brutality with this opening scene. Aunt Lydia devises a wrathful plan to teach The Handmaids a lesson after they disobeyed her in the season one finale. The handmaids are rounded up, threatened with barking dogs, and forced onto gallows, while Kate Bush's This Woman's Work plays hauntingly in the background. It is a spine-chilling scene that is not made easier by the reminder that Gilead would never get rid of all of its handmaids. Our Father, who art in heaven. Seriously? Number 8. June's Foiled Escape I'm the handmaid. Where's the outfit? How do I know you're the real deal? The third episode of the second season finds June hunkered down in the Boston Globe while she gears up to leave Gilead. She's found by a man named Omar, who reluctantly takes her to his home when he learns that their safe house is compromised. So are you brave or stupid? I'm not brave. So, there you go. After Omar and his family fail to return from church on time, June runs from their house and finds her way to the airstrip, where she is loaded onto the plane bound for Canada. Just as we think all might finally turn out well, the plane is intercepted by Gilead's guards, and June is ripped away from the prospect of freedom. No! Number 7. Janine's Sentence in the season one premiere, the handmaids are assembled and made to beat a man to death for assaulting a pregnant handmaid, resulting in the death of her baby. You may come forward and form a circle. June leads the charge, kicking down the unfortunate man without thinking twice. This exact scene is mirrored in the season finale, with Janine kneeling in the man's place. Charged with the crime of endangering a child, Janine is sentenced to death by stoning at the hands of her fellow handmaids. The price of his love is sometimes high, but it must be paid. <clears throat> now, you all know what to do. June once again steps up to the plate, only this time she defiantly flouts the orders and the other handmaids follow suit. Although her actions are certainly not without consequences, it's a captivating way to show just how much June has grown over the season. Number six, Fred's life comes to a satisfying end. I don't know that I was able to fully appreciate your situation until now. 
In the aftermath of his arrest by the Canadian government, Fred Waterford decides to cut a deal for his release in exchange for information about the inner workings of Gilead. This deal enrages June, who somehow manages to secure a prisoner exchange instead, Commander Waterford for 22 Gilead women. Fred is arrested before he can board a plane to Geneva to sign the deal, and finds himself in no man's land staring down a malevolent June. Cheers. I know you can't shoot me. At the beckoning of her whistle, June is joined by Emily and a host of other women who had suffered greatly because of people like Fred. The women chase the high and mighty commander through the wilderness like a terrified animal, stripping him of his dignity and eventually his life. Number 5. Serena's Consequence the law in Gilead forbids women from reading any written material, not educational books, not grocery lists, not even the Bible. June tells Serena that in Gilead, Nicole will never be able to understand God, as she won't be allowed to study scripture. My daughter eh. will be raised properly. She will understand the word of God and she will obey his word. She cannot read his word! This thought overwhelms Serena so much that she decides to raise it up before the Council of Leaders. To everyone's surprise, and outrage in the case of Fred, Serena brings out a Bible and reads a passage from it. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Her punishment? A life without her left pinky finger. The moment not only makes her realize that the world she helped create cares nothing for her, but it is also instrumental in her decision to let Nicole go. Blessings on you, Serena. <sighs> Number 4. June Reunites with Luke Ever since June made the decision to remain in Gilead at the end of Season 2, the question of whether she would ever reconnect with her husband has lingered in every viewer's mind. This episode finally answers such an inquiry. I'll be there. Luke, Emily, Rita, everyone who loves you is there. After Moira smuggles June into the Sarah boat, they successfully make it into Canada regardless of a few hiccups along the way. June and Luke reunite for the first time after years of being torn apart in Gilead. She tearfully apologizes for not being able to rescue Hannah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, it's just me. I'm sorry, it's just me. I didn't know. But Luke is just happy to see her again. Together, they can fight to save Hannah and take down Gilead. You want to fight them? You fight them from Canada. We will help you. Number 3. The Handmaid's Daring Escape Just We can beat the train, dummy! Prior to this episode, there have been multiple escape attempts by June that were either impeded or abandoned, so naturally, our hopes weren't too high for this one. When June and the other handmaids from the farmhouse are recaptured, they're bundled into a van with Aunt Lydia, bound for a breeding colony. Well, it's so wonderful being all together again, isn't it? Yeah. At a railroad crossing, the driver steps out to answer nature's call, and June sees an escape window. She grabs the cattle prod from Aunt Lydia, and the other handmaids make a run for it. While June and Janine successfully make it past the crossing, the other handmaids aren't as lucky, with two of them getting swept away by the passing train, and the others being gunned down. Number 2. The Waterford's Unforgivable Act She's going into labor! Please be. Oh, it's time. Granted, every instance of the ceremony in Gilead can be classified as intimate trauma, but this one was particularly cruel. June begins to have contractions, and is rushed home to initiate the birthing ritual. However, it turns out to be a false alarm, disappointing everyone present, especially the Waterfords. We are all impatient. I can promise you that this pregnancy will end soon, and Alfred will be off to her next posting." After the series does its best to humanize Serena in the preceding episodes, she takes several steps back into depravity by convincing Fred to induce June's labor in, we quote, "...the most natural way." 
It is an extremely graphic scene that is obviously more of a punishment than a procedure intended to induce the child's birth. Serena, listen to me. You don't have to do this. Stop, stop it. Offer it. Please don't do this. Stop it. It doesn't have to be this. Offer it. You, need to stop. you don't have to stop. Don't. Please. No. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Eden and Isaac are punished for infidelity. They're publicly drowned after their clandestine affair is discovered. That was kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. Moira finds June. The two have an emotional reconnection. June. High up above or down below. The Guardian. Mrs. Keyes confronts him on the farm. Good girl. <laughs> Make me proud. The protesters. June and Moira join a group protesting the formation of Gilead, and they are shot at. <laughs> Natalie's breakdown. June ostracizes Natalie from the other handmaids, leading to a fatal encounter. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Emily's Story The first season of the show is filled with many shocking moments that introduce us to the cruel dystopian world of Gilead. There was a black van, then footsteps on the stairs, then something quick and brutal that made her unable to scream. One such moment comes at the end of the third episode, not even with our protagonist, but with the handmaid formerly known as Of Glenn. When her romantic relationship with a Martha is discovered, the two women are put on trial for, quote, gender treachery and swiftly pronounced guilty. Your existence is an abomination. True justice would see you sent to an eternity of suffering. But God has seen fit to make you fruitful, and by that we are bound. Their sentences are immediately carried out, resulting in Martha being executed right before of Glenn's eyes. Meanwhile, an even darker fate awaits the handmaiden. After she wakes up in a blinding white patient room, we find out her real name is Emily and that she's experienced the unthinkable. You won't want what you cannot have. Blessed be the fruit, dear. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.